Have you ever been in a conversation where someone says, I don't like abortion, but I don't think we should make it illegal. Or they say, we shouldn't legislate morality. Or sometimes they just say it like this. They'll say, we shouldn't have laws that impose our views on others. How would you respond? The Bible tells Christians that we should be able to defend the faith. There are all kinds of questions that come up. And so what we want to look at today is the issue of abortion. How would you describe abortion? It is true that people of all ages are all across the spectrum of opinion on abortions, but most young people find themselves somewhere in the middle, and they really don't want to fight about it, but they intuitively know that it's wrong. Watch this clip. If I had to pick, I would say that I'm pro-choice, but personally I'm more on a on a somewhere in the middle. I wouldn't, but I can't choose for other people. Um, what do you call it, uh, pro-life? I think when the baby gets a heartbeat, that should be the cutoff point. That's just my stance. I'm not the kind of guy like I, I want everyone to follow my stance. Now, when you get a little older and you've experienced life, you know the harshness of the realities of the things that you deal with, such as abortion. And while the issues are no less complicated, the reaction to how it should be dealt with seems a little harsher. Watch this clip. As a Christian, sometimes questions like that are very difficult, but the Bible tells us that if we're going to follow Christ, then we must be able to give an answer. In 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. But in your hearts, honor Christ the Lord is holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do it in gentleness and respect, 1 Peter 3.15. Many people say that they don't like abortion, but don't think it should be illegal. So the next time you have a conversation with someone and the abortion issue comes up, remember these four things. Number one, legal decisions should be based on morality, not preferences. Number two, Laws are designed to limit these things that are wrong. Number three, government cannot be neutral about abortion. Number four, your moral authority comes from the highest objective source. It's important to understand that when people say they don't like abortion but don't want it to be illegal, what they're saying is not a moral statement. It's a preference statement. They're actually making a preference claim, and that's totally different from a moral stand. A preference claim is just what you like better. It's like saying, I prefer pepperoni pizza. But you have to understand that moral claims are more than just a preference. Moral claims is a, a subject of what is right and what is wrong. There's nothing wrong with pizza, uh, different flavors, but... There is something morally wrong when you kill somebody. So I'm making a, a moral claim when I say that abortion is wrong because it intentionally kills a baby. That's a moral claim. It's not a preference. Abortion is perhaps one of the most highly charged issues ever in our history. So finding an honest answer about this really takes a bit of courage. That's why it involves picking up your cross and following Jesus. We have to have the courage to talk to our culture about these very important issues. The Bible is very clear about murder. However, in some cases, the Bible does not forbid killing. There is a difference between killing and murder. For example, soldiers at war are permitted to kill the enemy. You can look to Bible verses like Joshua 11.20. Also, killing animals for food is not murder. Murder is defined as the premeditated killing of one person by another. So murder is unlawful killing. That is, a person decides in their head that I'm angry at you and I'm going to take your life. It is a choice that you're making, but it is a choice that is not in your right because you have no right. Your life is not more valuable than another person's life. The Bible condemns murder over and over again.
Our moral judicial system is set up on a system of witnesses. Even if it were legal, don't you think there ought to be two witnesses to determine the life of another? Can a mother just unilaterally, without the, the consent of the father, take the life of their unborn child? Is that moral? Biologically speaking, a birth begins at conception. It doesn't really matter what human political systems say. They will say all kinds of things depending on how morally corrupt they are. But the Bible clearly makes it clear that abortion is a moral choice. As a Christian, we must take up our cross. Legal decisions should be made on moral principles, not preferences. Imagine if someone says, I don't like slavery, but I prefer you not make it illegal. Or, I don't like spousal abuse, but you shouldn't make that illegal. I don't like pedophilia, you shouldn't make that illegal. Most of society would be outraged if you said that. But when it comes to killing of an unborn fetus, it seems to be more acceptable. Why is that? Anyone who would say those kinds of things just really doesn't understand why those things are wrong. They are wrong because of a moral choice. Slavery and spousal abuse, pedophilia, those things are not wrong because people grew to dislike them. They're wrong because one human has decided that his values are more important than their values. See, we are created in the image of God, and so any child should be protected because that life has value. Any woman should be protected not because it's wrong to beat someone, but it is because that person has value and shouldn't be beaten. Either it's morally right or it's morally wrong. There's no other choice. If abortion doesn't intentionally kill an innocent human being, then no one should care about reducing the number of abortions. However, if abortion does intentionally kill an innocent human being, that is all the reason to vote against it. Suppose a politician says, while he's personally against slavery, um, he doesn't think we need a law to protect people from slavery. Any politician that say something like that would be run out of office, and rightfully so. In fact, any society that just merely seeks to reduce the number of slaves is something seriously wrong with it. Laws are designed to reduce the actions of illegal activity. Laws are designed to limit those things that are wrong. The government cannot be neutral about abortion. The federal government is already deeply involved in abortion. In fact, the Supreme Court has co-opted the entire issue. It has left citizens and other politicians uh, totally helpless as to what they can and cannot do concerning the issue of abortion. While Americans talk about abortion all the time, there's very little that can be done to keep it from happening. Since Roe v. Wade, abortion has been the law of the land. So even if it's true that the federal government should stay out of the issue of abortion, shouldn't that also include the justice system? But even more importantly, the law is going to do one of two things. It's either going to recognize the, the life of the unborn as intrinsically valuable, or is going to recognize the unborn fetus as disposable and allow the killing of them. Currently, the federal court system has taken the stand that the unborn does not have the same protections and the same rights to live as it does a toddler or a teenager or even the elderly. That is not a neutral position. They have made a moral judgment and they have imposed it on us and on the entire nation. As a Christian, our moral authority comes from the highest ob objective standard. That standard is the Bible itself and God's word. The Ten Commandments, thou shalt not murder. See, our moral authority isn't our preference. If that's the standard on which our country should be uh, built upon, then we're going to have some problems because whatever your feelings feel that is right for the moment, that's what you're going to want. And that's what a lot of people live by. And that's exactly why we have so much chaos. We need a moral standard to stand upon so that we will have a firm foundation. It's not my choice uh, not to kill. It is God's choice. And it is a high standard 
And yes, it's inconvenient if you get pregnant, but maybe you should have thought of that before you got pregnant. Yes, I know people get raped. They, those things happen. Um, evil people are in the world. But does one wrong justify another? Can we not find another way to save the life of even the precious unborn children? There are many families that don't have children and can have children. And there is a shortage of, of children in, in some areas to be adopted. This video is not intended to solve all the problems. There is no solution. The only thing that we can do is be informed before we make the decision. So then, the next time a friend says something like, I don't like abortion, but I don't think you should impose your beliefs on me. Remember these four points. Legal decisions should be based on morality, not preferences. The laws are designed to limit those things that are wrong. The government cannot be neutral about abortion. I'm Steve Bell from Take Cross. Thank you for watching, and if you like this video, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell so that you'll be notified when our next video comes out. And to keep this conversation going, make sure to share this video with your friends and family.